It's that time again for another top 15, and I'm going to follow the same trend as I did last week and focus on one of my favorite genres of all time, which is 3D platformers. The thing about this genre though is that there doesn't really seem to be as many good 3D platformers as there was when I was a kid. My favorites is actually Banjo-Kazooie, Psychonauts, and Conker, which we desperately need a sequel for two of those that has yet to be announced, but I digress. Even though 3D platformers isn't super common, I do think that there is plenty of great 3D platformers available right now, so to make it easier for you to discover these great games, I compiled a list of the top 15 best 3D platformer games available on the Nintendo Switch right now. Of course, like all of my other videos, this is just an opinion, and if I forget any of your favorites, let me know in the comments below. I will also only be choosing one game per franchise for list sakes, but with that said, let's get right into the video. At number 15, I have Ginger Beyond the Crystal, which is very likely a game you probably haven't even heard of. It's a game that very clearly wears its heart on its sleeves by taking inspiration from old school 3D platformers on the Nintendo 64. Whether this be with the character design or the 3D platforming exploration, even the music kind of reminds me of Grant Kirkhope's music. With that said, you can change your character's costumes to use a variety of different powers to progress through this satisfying adventure. While it certainly doesn't have the most polish in the world, and it could improve in certain aspects such as the camera, it's a game with a lot of heart, and if you do like the old school 3D platformers, you may want to check out Ginger Beyond the Crystal. Hob the Definitive Edition is an interesting puzzle platformer. The first thing about this game is it's a very beautiful game to look at just visually, and it's actually very atmospheric. I think you really get absorbed into the world of Hob. It, however, being a puzzle platformer, it does have more of a focus on its puzzles with only light platforming, so I can't rank it higher for that reason. But if you're not only a fan of 3D platformers, but if you also like games like Zelda, it does have some similarities with that as well. With that said, it's not a perfect game and the camera could have used some work, but I think it's a really good solid game. The Blob 2 is an interesting 3D platformer for its originality. While yes, this is a remaster for a game that first released in 2011 for the Nintendo Wii, it still holds up all of these years later. It goes back to harp on the times of well-made mascots, but it does change the classic formula and has you absorb paint into your body, and then you paint the world to free its residents. The catch is you do have a timer to race, so you must rush to find the paint and save all of the residents. It's a fun game, though it does get a little repetitive as well as it is very guilty of a lot of hand-holding. Even then though, I think it's a nice platformer if you want something just a little bit different than you're used to. Candleman is yet another original 3D platformer that I don't think gets near as much attention as it should. Unlike most platformers, you aren't only battling platforms, obstacles, and enemies, but with Candleman, you are also competing with the ever-ending darkness. See, the thing about Candleman is that he can ignite his own fire, but the problem is you only can use this light for 10 seconds per life. This in return causes you to use the light very sparingly, which makes the obstacles just that much more difficult. I also really like the art style in this game as it goes for a more realistic look and I think it fits well and gives it a very ominous, mysterious atmosphere. I think it could be a little bit more challenging, but I think it's a fun adventure overall. Rogue Singularity is almost the exact opposite of Candleman. While aesthetically it doesn't have the most pleasing visuals in the world, it is a very good 3D platformer due to its tight controls and brutal difficulty. As you may have guessed, Rogue Singularity is a roguelike game where if you die you restart the entire game, so anytime you mess up, you really feel it. You do have 5 lives to complete the game and it also does have procedurally generated levels. I'm not really a huge fan of that type of thing because I like handcrafted adventures more, but it does fit Rogue Singularity rather well. If anything, Rogue Singularity is one of the best hidden gems on the Nintendo Switch. Human Fall Flat is probably the weirdest platformer on this entire list, but don't be surprised when you also find out that this is a really good game. Human Fall Flat is a physics-based platformer with a lot of puzzle solving. The puzzles are really well made too, but it does put a heavy focus on its platforming as well. 
It's not really as tight as I would like it to be, as it does feel like sometimes your character doesn't necessarily do what you want it to do, but because of the checkpoint system, it is never really frustrating either. I will say that it is indeed challenging as well, and as an added bonus, I think this game is a great cooperative game to play with friends. Sure, it may not be the prettiest game in the world, and it's almost a goofy looking game, but Human Fall Flat is definitely worth it. Rhyme is one of the more memorable games from this generation when I look back at things. It has a beautiful art style that really takes you into the world, and it can be an emotional ride as well without ever actually saying a word. It's a game that really drew me in from the very beginning, and it reminds me a lot of Eco, and because of that, it is a puzzle platformer, and much like Eco, it emphasizes puzzles more than it does platforming. So I couldn't place it higher on this list because of that reason. It does also have some technical issues on the Switch, but if you can look beyond that and you enjoy puzzle platformers, it is among the very best. Today is both a calm zen experience while also being exhilarating at the same time, and that's because Zoink Games has managed to make one of the most atmospheric titles on this list. Of course, you probably noticed the unique art style that Faye displays, which really adds to this atmosphere along its perfectly orchestrated music, but it's a fun world to explore as well as you communicate with several creatures along the way. There is really two aspects to this game that stands out to me though. Of course, it's platforming which you will gain new abilities as you progress through the world, but the other is it's almost espionage stealth-like gameplay. While it is a beautiful world to explore, there is also these alien-like creatures that aren't as friendly as you would like them to be, and on several occasions you will be expected to hide and work your way around them. This is why I say it's both calming and exhilarating as the tone can shift from one or the other. Either way, I really enjoyed Faye a lot. Snake Pass is not your traditional 3D platformer. Usually when you think of platformers, you think about jumping from platform to platform. But how do you make a platformer with a character that has no arms or legs? That is why Snake Pass is just so interesting, because there really is nothing else like it as you take on the form of a snake. And just like a snake, you must learn to move as one. You must slither and contort your body to wrap around poles and beams to get to your next destination. It's got that collect-a-thon aspect to it as well, which I absolutely adore, and it is my favorite type of 3D platformers. And then there is the music orchestrated by David Wise, and it all just comes together so well. I've seen some people kind of complain about the controls, but even that I honestly never had an issue with. This is definitely one of my favorite 3D platformers in recent memory, and if you're anything like me, you may come away as enthusiastic about it as I am. For me, the Nintendo 64 has been one of my all-time favorite consoles, and because of that, I have very fond memories of 3D platformers of that era. And New Super Lucky's Tale is a game that really feels nostalgic to me without it actually being a 90s platformer. It does though, it feels very much like a game that could have been made for the Nintendo 64, and it has this charm to it. It's a collect-a-thon platformer where you travel to several different worlds, and I think the platforming feels fantastic. The characters have great designs, the music is very nice, and it's filled with personality. Honestly, I wish more games was made like this, and if you do like Nintendo 64 collect-a-thon platformers, you may want to check out New Super Lucky's Tale. When Ukulele first showed up on Kickstarter, I backed it immediately. This was an incredibly easy decision to make, as it was supposed to be a spiritual successor to what I believe is one of the best 3D collectathon platformers ever made, Banjo Kazooie. And it was even made by some of the old Rareware team, so yeah, I had to invest in Ukulele. Then when the game released a few years later, it was pretty much what I expected. A collectathon platformer reminiscent of the Nintendo 64 with a lot of humorous characters that you have come to expect in Rare's games. You travel through various worlds in a very addictive fashion, collecting everything you can find. I however don't find it as good as Banjo-Kazooie, but I do like Ukulele a lot. Some of my most fond memories of the original PlayStation was with Spyro. I was always a really big fan of the purple reptilian hero, a small dragon with a big attitude. But here we are over 20 years later, and it's made its way to the Nintendo, and not just one game, but the entire trilogy. The thing is, it's still among the best 3D platformers ever, 
and it's got that very addictive collectathon aspect where you must find all of the hidden gems across a level, the hidden dragons, you have eggs, and so on and so forth. You unlock several abilities along the way and meet interesting characters, except for Moneybags. I mean, nobody likes him. But this game is top of its class and an absolute must have for the genre. It's hard to believe that the original Crash Bandicoot trilogy is available on a Nintendo platform, but it is finally here and it was very well worth the wait. There's just something about playing the Crash Bandicoot games on a handheld console that feels so fantastic. I really like how the Crash games work though as they give you a more linear path to follow while also retaining some of the precise 3D platforming. It has several levels and worlds to explore with some fun and wacky bosses to fight. The thing about the original Crash trilogy though is this is a very challenging franchise and it may actually be the most difficult game on this entire list from a design standpoint. For me that is a great thing so if you like challenging games look no further than Crash Bandicoot. There has been a lot of games that has tried to recreate the magic with old 3D collectathon platformers, but for some reason so many of these new and original games are just missing something. It's just a hard genre to perfect, but A Hat in Time is that exception. This is a game that truly recreates that magic in all of its glory. It has a fantastic collectathon aspect with all of the hourglasses you must find, a plethora of well-crafted worlds that varies in both environment and its characters. It has a ton of personality with charming characters and an art style that ties it all together. A Hat in Time is possibly the best new IP for 3D platformers in the last decade, if not even longer than that. It should come as no surprise that the number one spot belongs to none other than Super Mario Odyssey. Nintendo has always excelled in this genre dating all the way back to Mario 64, but Nintendo never stopped making 3D platformers. They have a lot of experience with this genre whether that be with Mario Sunshine, Mario Galaxy, or now Super Mario Odyssey, and it is absolutely brilliant. The level design is outstanding with a lot of hidden moons to collect, but my favorite thing about Mario Odyssey is its unique gameplay mechanic that has Mario use his new friend Cappy to transfer his body into other creatures. This has the game constantly changing as you take on different characters with entirely different abilities such as the Bullet Bill to fly around in, or a frog to jump high. The thing is, my favorite 3D platformers may be Banjo-Kazooie, Conker, or Psychonauts, but I believe that Mario Odyssey is not only the best 3D platformer on the Nintendo Switch, but it may be the best 3D platformer ever made. That is how good this game is. Anyways though, that's it for this video, but if I forgot any of your favorites, let me know in the comments below. And if you liked the video, don't forget to hit the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Peace out.